declared a loser in a competition for the Air Force, and yet then the Navy took a look at it, at the folks at Northrop and said, hey, we think this has some possibilities. McDonnell Douglas picked up that basic design of the YF-17 and turned it into the Defender of the Fleet. Absolutely. Now the Super Hornet is set up for the carrier rake. As most of you know, the job of a naval aviator is not complete until an aircraft is back aboard its floating home. Take it down. Listen to the power changes as he approaches to land right on a spot that's been predetermined here. Get this one on the carrier deck. Bingo. Right down. So that's the big difference there. Three degree glide slope all the way into the deck. There's no flaring. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting about the Rhino is that if you put it in auto throttle and you keep the flight path marker on the spot on the carrier deck where you're supposed to land, if you pull back on the stick a little bit to get the flight path marker up, the throttles will automatically move up a little bit and give you a little more power. Absolutely. It's a phenomenal system. Absolutely, that's exactly how it works. Just engage that and you basically fly the glide slope with your right hand. Very different from what we're taught when we're young guys learning to land on the boat, that's for sure. Hey guys, it's uh, Tom here, live media now. I can't see me, I'm actually uh, holding the camera in right now doing the interview, but uh, anyway, just wanted to uh, introduce you guys to uh, the folks from the uh, Navy F-18 technical, tactical uh, demo team. Uh, if you gentlemen would care to introduce yourself, we're standing here right next to the F-18 Hornet. I'm uh, Lieutenant Justin Halligan, call sign Juggs, originally from uh, Connecticut. Went to the University of Colorado for uh, college and then joined the Navy after that. Uh, I'm a pilot flying uh, F-18s A through F uh, and flying the F-18F in the uh, tactical demonstration. I'm uh, Lieutenant Brian Pinkney, call sign uh, STAG. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Went to uh, did ROTC uh, at Vanderbilt University. Went down to flight school in, uh, in Pensacola. I'm a weapons system officer, a WIZO. Fly uh, both the uh, Delta and the Foxtrot. Uh, then I'm a secret attack demo flying, uh, flying the F-18. Your demo team and uh, how you guys are set up and how you guys uh, run your operations, please. Yep, uh, we're part of the U.S. TAC demo team. We're actually based uh, out of VFA 106 at uh, Oceana, Virginia. Uh, NAS Oceana, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, we're pretty. We are uh, permanent instructors down there. So uh, right during the week, uh, we're training uh, pilots coming out of uh, coming out of flight school and those that uh, are transitioning to the uh, Hornet or Super Hornet. Uh, and then on the weekends, we got a special call and we come out and do, uh, do air shows. Uh, we were in Lakeland, Florida uh, a couple of weeks back, went to Tuscaloosa and here at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, the mission of the, of the actual demo is to, to push recruitment and just uh, educate the public uh, and continue a dialogue with the public of what, uh, what naval aviation is about uh, and, and what we do. So uh, the jets we, uh, we use, the maintainers, and we are actually uh, we're just permanently based uh, at 106. These jets are used to train uh, naval aviators every day and just on, and on the weekends uh, we're able to fly them uh, for uh, people in the air show. There's a, a slightly different configuration for us in the air show. We take the uh, centerline fuel tanks off and the weapons pylons. So uh, we, maintenance tries to keep two jets for us in the configuration we need so that we can practice uh, once a week before we come out to these air shows. So, uh, we're looking sharp when we come out here. If not, it's a pretty quick fix, about an hour for them to uh, configure a jet for us. So, as Stack said, as soon as this jet gets home on Sunday night, it'll be flying on Monday, training students, uh, either pilots or wizzos, uh, to get ready to send them to the fleet. And as you said, it's about a uh, nine month process, eight to nine months for them to get trained. Uh, and we send them out the door as uh, fleet naval aviators, either pilots or wizzos. And some of them are going straight to carriers deployed out at sea. Uh, either in the Gulf or the Western Pacific or over to Japan. 
So it's it's pretty neat deal for both of us uh, to be able to come out here on the weekends and talk to uh, people, talk to kids, tell them about the Navy. A lot of people see us in flight suits and they immediately think, oh, you're in the Air Force. Um, so it's good to educate the public on the fact that the Navy does have fighter jets and the capability that we have using aircraft carriers and other ships to get us into uh, places that we need to be. Yeah, that's actually a great point. I mean, could you tell us a little bit about the differences between, you know, choosing a career as a as a, an Air Force pilot as compared to maybe a Navy pilot, the different types of missions or kind of the different types of aircraft you guys might come in contact with at the Navy as compared to the Air Force? Uh, I'd say uh, off the top, uh, uh, my uncle is a naval aviator, so I had, uh, had a lot of Navy in my family, so that's one of the reasons I, I joined the Navy. Uh, as far as naval aviation is concerned, uh, I think our, our biggest... Uh, both, both services, the Air Force and the, and the Navy, obviously, are, are top-notch. Uh, the Navy brings a, some added flexibility, obviously, with the ship, shipboard operations. Uh, we don't need to have it. Uh, we do not have any sort of field available. We can uh, launch from the ship uh, anywhere in the world. We can uh, conduct strike or humanitarian uh, needs. Uh, right off the top, if you look at a naval aircraft, you can actually see our landing gear is uh, much more, a lot more bulky uh, than you'll ever see on an Air Force jet. And that's due to uh, carrier landings. Uh, that and our tail hook sort of distinguishes uh, all our all the aircraft uh, from any sort of air force or uh, civilian counterpart. Um, the F-18 itself, its mission is both air to ground uh, and air to air, so we are able to do, uh, we and we train to both uh, both uh, in our FRS and as instructors. So uh, obviously you can't see it, but uh, we, we uh, carry a fighter configuration of, uh, of AMRAMs, sidewinders, uh, or uh, Sparrows, uh, and then air to ground we can carry the JDAM for LGPs or or a mix of those depending on what the, the mission calls for. And that's kind of the designation of the FA-18, it's the fighter attack. So most aircraft you see, like you have the F-16, it's a fighter aircraft. They configured it in later years to be a, an attack airplane, but this thing was built from the ground to be a dual role, multi-mission capable uh, and be both fighter and attack airplane. I think as Stag was saying, uh, for me being uh, in the Navy, vice in the Air Force, I had a grandfather that was in the Navy. I've always kind of been, uh, impressed with uh, ships and especially aircraft carriers and that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be someone who could land on an aircraft carrier. Training wise, a fighter pilot in the uh, Air Force and a fighter pilot in the Navy, syllabus is pretty much the same. We're going to learn the same tactics, uh, basic fighter maneuvering, uh, strike tactics, that kind of stuff. But where we separate ourselves is the end. We'll take a whole month and a half in flight school and then again in F-18s to uh, learn to land aboard the ship. For us in the Navy, as a pilot, the first time that you go out there, you were in the airplane by yourself. Uh, my personal experience was the first time I ever saw a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. I was overhead 5,000 feet in an airplane by myself, getting ready to land on it with my hook down. So the training is kind of intensive because obviously the inherent danger with landing on a boat, but that is really what separates us from an Air Force uh, fighter pilot or attack pilot. So that's pretty neat, and that's kind of what drew me to the Navy. Uh, again, we're all kind of in the time frame, you know, people hear this all the time. There's a movie called Top Gun that came out, and I think inspired a lot of people uh, and kind of turned them on to what naval aviation was. So, uh, you know, us in our generation being that, you know, we were around 8, 10 years old at that point. Uh, it was pretty impressive as a kid, and that, you know, as soon as you see something like that, you want to grow up and, and be that guy. So, uh, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from, being, uh, being a pilot.